All right, hello everyone. Welcome to the BMG Advanced Digital Readiness Introduction Webinar. My name is Kevin Martini. I'll be your presenter today. Just to ensure we have a successful event, please stay muted and of course chat your questions to everyone. There's a group of us monitoring chats just to ensure your questions get answered. And for any follow-up concerns, issues, comments, or feedback, feel free to email us at bmgadrbrownmachinegroup.com or if you're interested in our PM on-site training or part stocking, go ahead and email us at sales at brownmachinegroup.com. Now in my introduction to BMG's ADR or Advanced Digital Readiness, first I'll talk a little bit about the partnership between Brown Machine Group and EI3, then move off, move into the remote support benefit package. After that, we'll talk a little bit about the applications for OEE, remote monitoring, downtime tracking, and remote service. After that, we'll talk a little bit about the customer portal. And then, of course, I'll finish it up with the ADR mobile, mobile portal. So again, my name is Kevin Martini. I'm the ADR specialist here at Brown Machine Group. Excuse me, started back at Brown in 2018 as a second shift electrician. And through a little hard work and determination, I was able to advance to the company to the current position that I hold now. And as you can see, I have quite a bit extensive, uh, extensive experience in thermal forming machinery, whether it be assembly, troubleshooting or repair, and also a little bit of electrical mechanical engineering background. So for myself to have the opportunity to promote a product like this gives me great appreciation for Brown Machine Group and their commitment on helping the automation industry take that next step into the IIoT. So now I'm going to go into a little bit about Brown Machine Group and of course EI3. I'm sure many of you are familiar with Brown Machine Group, 60 years, over 60 years of thermal forming machine experience, servicing 65 countries worldwide. After our latest acquisition of Axitronics, Brown Machine Group now offers a full suite of turnkey solutions for the thermal forming and packaging systems for the food and beverage market. We engineer with confidence, we design with confidence, we build with confidence, so of course you can run with confidence. Brown Machine Group has been in partnership with EI3 for just over a year and a half, and through the partnership I'd like to announce that Brown Machine Group is the first thermal forming company to app to install and to install this type of remote connectivity and data science collection. EI3 was founded in 1999 by Spencer Kramer. Spencer was a former process controls technician. So like myself, I've spent many hours hooked to machines, debugging, trying to figure out what happened in the machine and come up with a safe and effective and cost effective solution to repair the machines. Spencer realized that there was a, a better way to do this, a better way to access the machines versus being on the floor all the time. So of course, the, between the collaboration of a group of IT security professionals and a group of machine control specialists, they were able to come up to, they were able to create a safe and secure way to connect machines and collect data through the cloud. Now, 20 years later, 15,000 clients, 500 facilities in 100 countries, three offices and five data centers, EI3 has shown that they have the ability to make a huge impact on the data science division and the IIoT. And I'm sure many of you noticed they've got three offices. The main office is located in New York. Their Montreal, Canada office is strictly developed, is dedicated to Java development. And of course, their Zurich, Switzerland the office has been dedicated to data science division. They've got five data centers, two in the United States, one in Germany, one in Switzerland, and one in China. So no matter where you're located, your information will be safe, secure, and extremely accessible. Now, I just want to point over to the right a little bit here. There's a couple companies um, that you're probably familiar with that EI3 has incorporated a very similar type of technology into. Um, Millicron, Bobs, and Hilton are just the three I'll talk about here a little bit. Millicron, every machine that Millicron builds and runs, runs the Empower series. Again, very similar, very similar application to Brown Machine's ADR service. BOPS does the BOPS Connect. Of course, it's EI3's data science and predictable learning. And then Hilton. I know Hilton doesn't have much influence on our industry, but they do use a very similar process or very similar product called LightStay. And between the three collab between the collaboration of the three companies, ADR has been a result of that. 
All right, moving on to ADR's remote support service package. Brown Machine has always offered free service. We've always offered free service. We'll always be offering free service. And of course, through free service, it's always a good thing, but at some point there's gonna be some type of issue with your machine that we can't get to readily available. Now with the ADR support system, we can, we can connect to your machine at any point of any time. Now ADR has improved, improved remote service. Of course, you get a dedicated technician 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You get 24 hour, 24 hours a day, seven days a week answering service. This technician is dedicated fully to your machine, your equipment, and your service. If there's any time that you need, a, a, any time that you need customer service or your machine repaired, this will be the gentleman that you contact. And of course, if there's, you know, we have a highly dedicated and experienced group of technicians, but at some point we'll run into a snag like anybody else. And with the ADR service, it offers complete remote support service through BMG's engineers. So through the engineers and the technicians, they'll be able to come up with a safe and efficient and effective way to repair your machine. And of course, your technicians will have remote login capabilities as well as you will. One thing I did want to talk about is and it's very exciting for us here is our augmented reality app, Euphoria Chalk. If some of you are unfamiliar with augmented reality, I'll talk a little bit about it. Augmented reality is one of the biggest technology trends right now, and it's only getting bigger. We have AR smartphone, AR have AR incorporated smartphones. We have sunglasses that will come, will create a completely 100% augmented reality application for you. And as augmented reality progresses, more and more devices become accessible around the world. And if you're unfamiliar with Euphoria Chalk, I'll give a little explanation of how it works. It's very simple. We all have it downloaded on our phones or tablets. You simply download the, it onto your device, whether it be an Apple or a Samsung. We open up a Euphoria Chalk code session. It will automatically generate a code. We will email or text you that code. You simply enter it into Euphoria Chalk session and automatically once the session is, is connected, we will be able to see your machine in real time as if we were standing next to you. So if your technician is walking around the machine and we happen to see somewhere where it could be uh, possibly a dry fault status or a fuse blown, we can have him go over to that instance, um, draw a circle, leave voice or digital annotations. He can move on and then he can come back and repair that type of machine, that machine at any point um, in the future. So this Euphoria Chalk really takes and puts a, a technician next to you we don't have to send somebody out. There's no more waiting to possibly get a, an answer. He will be right next to you anytime you need him, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Now moving on to the ADR connection matrix. This basically is the, the application that we're gonna be using to implement it into the machines. There's a couple different ways I will talk, uh, touch base on both ways that we're installing it. But the first way is a, a little more cost effective and very much simpler and easier to install. All right, so this is our connection matrix. Before I get started, I just wanna kind of read this little thing over here to your right, is this is a very simple system that has outbound traffic only that provides security, redundancy, and simplicity. And I just wanted to read that because a lot of people are getting confused on how exactly this works. This is only an outbound signal. We have no availability to enter the machine unless it's unlocked in this area right here. And of course, I'm going to get into that a little bit farther with some of the remote monitoring and stuff like that. So our application here at Brown Machine Group, as you can see, we've got three red boxes located here on the bottom right of the slide. This is indicating three completely different lines. So right now we've got three separate lines hooked to one green box. And the way we're doing it, our first installation is we just simply install one red box into either your former, which could be Brown or Lyle, and or if you're putting it in a trim press, Brown or Lyle, or if you possibly want to install it in a piece of NAS equipment. The system is completely compatible with anything that is PLC based. So it can implement into anything that has a PLC. Over here to our right, again, this is where we'll start. And of course, you'll see I, I'm working backwards 
just because that is the way the information flows and I wanted to keep the, the progression that way. So like I said, we'll, I'll be working backwards. Back to installation, what we're doing is we're installing this one red box, preferably into the former. And then we're just simply daisy chaining every piece of equipment on that line through ethernet and external RJ45 hubs on each piece of equipment. So like I said, you'll install this in the former, it will simply daisy chain throughout the line, and then that will all connect all pieces of equipment. Again, it is more cost effective. It is very simple to install, but the only problem is, is it hampers a little bit of flexibility from, from component to component. Still works, it still will get you your OEE, still the downtime tracking, remote monitoring, and of course the remote service. You still have all those capabilities, but you're only going to pull OEE off the entire line versus just one individual piece of equipment. Now, the second way we can install this, it is more expensive, um, but it does give you a little more control over each piece of equipment. This way, we would install one red box per piece of equipment. So you would have one red box in, let's say, your Brown or Lyle former. You'll turn around and you'll put a red box in either your Brown or Lyle trim press. And then you can go farther to put one in either a piece of NAS uh, secondary packaging equipment or uh, a grinder or an extruder. Like I said, it is more expensive, but it gives you that ability to remotely monitor each piece of equipment and have the applications for OEE and downtime tracking on each separate piece of equipment. So again, two different installations, two different ways to do it, still going to completely accomplish exactly what you're trying to do but just a little bit um, a roundabout way, so to speak. Now, one other thing I wanna talk about with the red box is this box is your data storage point. This is where it's storing all the data from your pre-programmed -pro data to your actual process data. All that data is stored in the red box, whether it comes from the former, the press, uh, a bagger, um, a case packer, a grinder or an extruder, any other equipment that's locked, locked into that line will be stored into this red data box here. And of course, like I said, this is three lines. So you have three completely different storage devices right here. Now going farther up to our green box right here, as many as you can see, hopefully you can read that. It says the green box separates OT and IT. OT kind of has that access level on the red box. To move up a little bit farther up, that's where you get into the green box, and that's where either OT or your administrator has control over this. And I'll talk a little bit about this farther along when I get into the next couple slides. So all that data is, is basically logged right here in this, this green box. It, it's captured in the red box, transmitted up to the green box, and then the green box is where all the data transmission begins. It outbound transmission, outbound traffic only through the company's firewall into the internet and then into EI3's private cloud infrastructure. Again, this cloud is completely designed for the industry and it is completely designed by EI3. It's the same cloud that Millicron uses, Bob's Hilton, Bob's uses, Hilton uses, ABB uses it. We're all relatively using the same type of application for the cloud system. So here it's locked. I'll get into a little bit of that, but that's just indicating that your, your system is locked and your data is safe and secure. Now, one thing I wanna talk about real quick and before I get too far is some people are, are assuming that we're taking data from right here and that's, that's not how the system works. The data is actually all collected in the cloud. So any type of, of data that you're pulling for your OEE, any type of other statistics, your reports or your data points are all coming from the cloud. There's generally no activity on past the green box side unless there's an issue and a technician is required to enter into the system. Moving on, as you can see, I, we've got our technician out here just basically monitoring all the stuff. And like I said, that's why I wanted to move backwards just because that's the way the signal travels. And I felt that that was the best explanation to give everybody is we start at the red box, transmits to the green, admits to the company's firewall and to your internet and then into the, the, the private cloud structure. All right, moving on, what does ADR offer? Advanced Digital Readiness offers a couple different applications. I'll get into some of them here 
And I tried to carry on with some more explanation farther down when we get into the customer portal and some of the other places. But just in this application, we'll start off here and we'll, we'll progress forward. All right, our remote service. This is kind of the lock and key aspect of getting into the machines on the IT side through to the OT side. The keys are, are act, the, the keys are the key to accessing this, this information and this, these devices. And if you notice, it is a, a simple network architecture with one trunk to the outside world for machine, multiple machine connections. So we can hook up multiple machines to one green box. That one green box will be the only signal through the company's firewall out to EI3's private cloud infrastructure. Now through standard IP addressing, we can get them red boxes up to about 40. After that, we could still continue with just one green box, but we would have to do some type of re-addressing for IP addresses. But again, 40 has been about the, the number where we'd like to stay comfortable with getting these installed. And of course, this is where the remote access for internal customers start, as well as support through OEM or a third party. Now over here to the left, you'll see we've got our keys. We've got three keys. These are shown gray right now because they're they're unlocked um, and they're you know they're not being used. When a key is activated, the key will turn red, and then over here to the left, we have a little check mark that will also that will turn green. And then if you hover over the key, it'll just show you who's using that that key. The the key is the access point to where you control who's entering into the machine and who's not. These keys can be set up in a couple different ways. They can be set up for a single user or they can be set up for multiple users. Now, the single user application is kind of exactly how it sounds. I will contact or whoever it is through a third party, they will contact either the administrative administrator of the system or the IT department. They will go in through the customer portal. They will create a key. Creating these keys will take the user information, the key creator information, the purpose, the time, the date, at even the amount of time that he's in for this machine. So if it's a temporary user, a one-time user, they'll go through all them same steps, but the password that they create will just be a one-time user password. You won't have access to the machine multiple times. They'll use that access, that key, or that, I'm sorry, that password, they'll have that password. And then of course, to go even farther, they'll set them up with a time limit. So when that time limit is done, they will automatically kick them out of the machine and whatever they've done will be basically left. They will have to contact you again. You will give them another temporary access code or a password and set them up with another time limit. And then they'll enter back in the machine and make the changes. The next way you can set up the key is a little more permanent. It's still very similar functions. You'll go in there, you'll select the key. But the only difference is, is the password will be permanent. You can make this anything that they, they desire and there'll be no time limit. So if I were to choose to contact you and there's an issue with the machine, you've already set me up with the password and the user account, I can connect to the machine anytime I want. And that just helps me being able to, to track whether the, um, it's up to date, your remote service is current and the machine is connected. So again, it just gives a little bit of control to either the administrator or the IT department to allow them to access that machine when they choose to. So no matter how many times the application gets downloaded on your phone, nobody's going to enter in this machine, but it's a, unless it's approved by, like I said, IT or the administrative department. And then just two more things I want to touch on over here to our left is the, the thing right above my little cursor here is the customer portal. The customer portal is where everything happens. This is where the customer will get in there. He will go in and he will set up the alerts, any type of downtime tracking instances he will set up any type of um, teams that he wants to work together, he'll set up through all this customer portal. And when we install this onto your machine, I will work with you to go through the customer portal to set all this stuff up. But like I said, this is kind of where everything happens on the user side. You'll be able to do all your report printing from there, all your alerts, any type of setup for alerts will be set up through that, that customer portal access right there. And then just on uh, farther down, this one here is the remote service session report. One thing that's nice about the remote service session report is it will automatically log all the data for anybody that has accessed that machine. 
So you can't have somebody come into your machine, make a random change and then leave and not know what happened. As soon as you log into that remote service session, it will automatically log all your information, whether it be to the day, to the month, um, to the quarter, or going out as far as a year if you've had the service. Anytime you wanna find out who is in that machine, that's where it comes from is through this remote service report. And I've got a little slide at the end that gives you a little more explanation of the remote service report session. All right, downtime tracking. This is the big one that everybody likes to hear about. Everybody wants to see and, and wants to know how they can incorporate it in their system. As many of you know, unplanned downtime is a manufacturer's worst nightmare. A, a majority of manufacturers experience on average 800 hours of downtime, uh, downtime events every year. That's a tremendous amount of downtime. You know, if we could cut that in half with the ADR system, that's a huge accomplishment for us as an OEM for our customers and for their employees. Now, before we get too far into it, I want you just to kind of see over here to the left, this is our um, line graph with, a, we've got a couple of different colors and I'll explain what the colors are and stuff. But before I wanna get started, I wanna just share a funny story with between myself and everybody out there. I used to be, I used to do quite a bit of traveling and, and programming for machines. And I thought it was funny, one time I went to a customer's plant, he had a machine that was down and I walked in and I started getting close to the machine. And on the side of the machine, they had this big brown pegboard. And on the on the pegboard, where there was a clipboard with a string and a pencil that was about yay, do, yay big that looked like it had been chewed on from the 80s. And all over the floor and all over the fork truck tires and, and all over employees were these little blue slips of paper. And these were the downtime events. And this is how they were recording all their downtime. And I always thought to myself, there's no way anybody's ever going to be able to record any of this in a timely manner because these, these blue papers are everywhere. With the, the implementation uh, in, intent of ADRs, we get rid of all that. Like it says, no more shuffling of paper logs. Uh, you know, you don't have to go through any more of that stuff. And, and one of the factors that stops that is our two-click downtime coding. We here at Brown Machine Group have in integrated this into our brand new next-gen controls that we currently are installing on our brand new machines. And with the two-click downtime coding, it really makes it very nice to log and decode these downtime events. Now, if you notice here, I'll start off at the bottom. These tabs here are all 100% customizable, creatable for you for your downtime codes. And it, this can be any type of downtime, downtime code that you want to monitor, whether it be like it said, a paper jam, no material, failed component. You could be switching tools. You could be switching roles of material. Um, you could have no employees. We can make any tag that you want for any type of downtime event. So like I said, they're not a cookie cutter sheet of what we're gonna send you and this is what you're gonna use. You simply send me a list. I will design it. I will put it on either your tablet, on the customer portal, or if you're getting the new HMIs, I'll put them on the new HMI. And what it, the way the two-click downtime coding works is it's, it's kind of nice. But as you can see, we've got some green, some blue, and some red. The green is machine running. There's no need for coding any of that. The blue here is already a coded downtime event. And the simple process works is you would just simply come over here, you click it on your mouse. This window right here will pop up. You simply click on whatever downtime event you wanna code, however you wanna code it. And then farther on this, there'll be a drop down menu. I was gonna put it, but it's, it's quite extensive and I didn't wanna get too far into it. But that allows you to any, enter any type of journal information into that downtime event. So if you are switching roles, you can switch from, you know, different thicknesses, different, um, different colors, you know, and, and automatically put that type of information into that downtime coded. Whether you're changing tools and you want to change from a, we'll say a four up to a, an eight up or a 12 up, you can go in there in that journal information and log that information for later dates. So you can look and say, hey, it took us an hour and a half to change from tool to tool. Why is it taking us three hours? So like I said, it kind of mimics um, those papers, but it gives you a lot better grasp of why exactly this was happening and when it exactly happened. And then our last one is red. That is an uncoded downtime event. Now, if you were to go in here and print off a report, 
uh, whether it be a period of report or any type of analysis report, those downtime, unplanned downtime events are going to come up in your report as an unplanned downtime event. So it will keep track of what was logged, what wasn't logged, and what type of events were logged. And to go even a little bit farther than that, this system will actually be able to have, allow you to log mean time between failure and mean time to repair, which is very handy because if you have multiple machines and you have a break on one, you can log all that information. And if you see that happening on a secondary machine, it'll give you an idea of how long that component may last and how long it's gonna take to fix. It works towards a, a preventative, predictive preventative type of maintenance. That whole break fix type of thing, we're trying to repair that and trying to replace that with this type of system that allows you to accurately log the data, store the data, and retrieve the data at any point you would like to. Okay, into our remote monitoring. This is relatively simple. Um, we're just doing a few things off the remote monitoring. It'll get a little more technical the farther I get when I get into the little in little into the customer portal. But the way the remote monitoring works is we in the ADR system we're tracking multiple multiple data point multiple conditions through data points in the PLC. We've got a couple out there right now that have over 300 data points and they monitor quite a few of these. So like giving them the ability to monitor multiple data points, you can go even farther and create, like it says, customizable alerts that will be sent out via text message or an email regarding a machine events or status. And to give a little explanation on that is if you look on the left here, we've got a graph that's basically showing uh, cycle speed. And you can see their cycle speed, they wanna be about around nine seconds a cycle which isn't, isn't too bad. It's not extremely fast, but it's not very, very slow. And we can go in there and set up 100% customizable alerts for that index condition. So if we're watching it and we say, okay, this index condition down here is we're getting down to about seven, seven and a half second cycles, um, we need to know why. So this system, we can go in there through the customer portal and we can create a 100% customizable alert that can automatically be generated and sent out at any point in that process. So let's say if that thing gets down to about just under eight seconds a cycle for any point, we can send out an alert to say your maintenance man. He will get that alert through a phone, uh, text or email. And this system can go even farther and be kind of annoyingly persistent to where we can set these up to, to be sent out every minute, every minutes every five minutes every 15 minutes it doesn't care it will send out as many alerts as it wants or as many alerts as you set up to get this machine repaired and the one thing that's nice about this is i'm sure some of you are familiar but sometimes these machines will be running they'll have a red light flashing and there'll be three people around it still running it and they don't care why the red light's flashing the maintenance guy comes over he starts yelling at everybody because the light's flashing somebody should have checked out the machine why didn't anybody come and get him? It stops all that because this system, like I said, will kind of be an annoyingly persistent to say, hey, um, we're, getting, we're getting low on our index speed or we have um, a servo motor that's reaching you know, peak RMS. Somebody better get out here and take a look at this. You know, Even if your form station, if the tonnage of the form station, one of your cells is picking up a different amount from the other ones, automatically can create a, a text or an email will automatically send that out to you. And then you will know kind of what's going on this is with this machine. You'll hear me say it a lot, predictive preventive maintenance, because this system really does monitor the machine for you. You don't have to be on the floor wondering what's going on. You don't have to stand next to it to make sure it's running okay. You can create 100% customizable alerts to send out at any point to show you that this machine is, is running efficiently and properly. And of course, the farther down, that it's not down, it's making product. All right, moving on to OEE. I'm sure many of you are familiar with OEE. That's probably not much I need to, to really get into. You know, OEE, we all know it's a whole lot more than just a number. 
It has much more powerful impact on the bottom line of your manufacturing. And in the long run, OEE is the ultimate measuring stick to determine your success on improving your machines, your company, and machinery efficiency. Now, one thing I want to point out, as many of you know, availability times performance times quality gives you your OEE. Your availability, of course, is operating time for the machine and complete overall operating time in the plant. Performance, machine speed cycles, the average speed cycles. And then, of course, we've got quality, good material over total material. Now, one thing I want to talk about with quality is there is a little bit of manual um, entering that will need to be done to record quality. It won't know what quality is and what quality isn't. So with the tablet or your smartphone, you'll have to go in there and kind of just enter how many good parts, how many bad parts, and how much total material you've run. And it's very easy to do. Again, when I get it set up for you, I'll go into the customer portal, we'll set it all up, and then when you download the, the application, it'll it'll go from there, and then you can still kind of remotely monitor and, and pull reports off of all this stuff. One thing I wanted to say is I, I caught a podcast on PMMI Unplugged, and they were talking about OEE because it is a kind of a broad spectrum of there's a lot of factors that go into OEE. But PMMI Impact said that OEE, 100% of OEE is unattainable, almost unobtainable. I'm sure there's some machines out there that run in the upper 90s, maybe even close to 100. You know, that's great. But in the automation industry, our industry, 85% is considered world-class. Excuse me. It's not uncommon, but it is world-class. It's the upper echelon of OEE, you know, and 85% of OEE is a great, great number to, to focus on because the higher the OEE, the more benefits the company is going to have, the more benefits the OEM is going to have. And of course, if everybody's happy, it, it creates a better business um, business relationship. And one thing I did want to kind of talk about just a little bit again on PMMI Unplugged or Unpacked, they talked about OEE and they said an OEE, uh, a 10% increase in OEE could potentially yield up to a 77% in increase in profits. So that's a huge, huge amount by increasing 10%. You know, if you can increase the companies by 5% overall, that's still probably about 30 to 35% increase in profits which again is a huge amount of money. And if you're saving, the customers are, your customers are saving, your employees are gonna get better benefits, they're gonna get raises, and overall that's gonna make everybody happier. Now moving on to BMG's customer portal. This is gonna give you a little more explanation of kind of some of the stuff I, I talked about. And this is more information that, this is more stuff that you will see on your end going into the customer portal side. So as you can see, I've got a few tabs there. We've got the dashboard, tools, reports, remote monitoring, downtime tracking. I'm not gonna talk about all of them because it could get quite extensive and I could probably do a whole nother webinar on just the customer portal. So we'll just leave this and I'll go through this. And if you're interested, go ahead and reach out to me and I'll be more than willing to discuss this a little farther with you. So the first screen I'm going to talk about is the productivity dashboard. This is exactly what you'll see on the customer portal through BMG's website. The first page is the, the productivity dashboard. This is just kind of um, a breakdown of, of what's happening on your machine side. And of course, we've got our production in the last 24 hours, which gives you your complete OEE availability times performance times quality. Very simple um, graph there. That'll be one of the graphs that you can see on the mobile portal through your smartphone or tablet. Next over to the right, upper right, we've got our trends graph. This is a, just a little more of a breakdown than your production graph. It shows you, um, you know, your jobs daily, weekly, monthly, or quarterly. And then, like I said, and it breaks down a little bit farther to see each individual piece on the line graph versus the graph on the left just showing you more in numbers. Um, this will show you actually in your lines. Lower left-hand side, remote service report session. This is where I was kind of talking about everything being logged in. So if there's anybody that accesses the machine, you're gonna see it over here on this type of report. They're gonna store the purpose, the creator of the key, the user of the key, how long they were in for, the date, the time, and what they were doing. And, 
to the machine. And as you can see, we've got one session here. If I were to click on this, it would open up the session and, and show who that was. But I, I want to keep it generally basic for everybody to, to view. So as you can see, we had one session for 50 minutes. And then we had a total of three sessions for the last 12 months, which means is about two hours. More than likely, this was just a setup, showing them how the service works, getting them set up with the customer portal, getting familiar with a few of them things. And then over here to the right is the services that they are currently using. The remote monitoring service, the customer portal service, the remote, mon or re remote service, remote monitoring, and downtime tracking. These three down here are other options that are available where this customer decided that he just didn't want to do it because we offer recipe management through our HMI. And then quality is something that you would have to manually enter in quite a bit more. And then prediction maintenance is something that is pretty far down the line for the automation industry. Uh, any type of prediction pretty much breaks down to fully autonomous machines. And many of you know that we're, we're pretty far away from any type of technology like that. Now into the remote monitoring via the BMG's customer portal. This kind of takes that remote monitoring slide that I had and, and gives a little more breakdown of how exactly everything kind of works. And you can see on your screen, I've got six tabs. Now, just a quick reminder that these are the data points that I picked up. And again, you can fill your entire screen with all the data points that you want to matter. There's no amount that you can't do. There's no maximum that, you know, as many as you want to fit on the screen, we can design, we can install, and you can sit at home or upstairs in the office and, and watch 150 different data points and, and, you know, monitor these data points just visually. So I'm going to talk just a couple about a couple of them. Over here is we got our index servo motor RMS torque. Now, as you can see, we're at 51%, which isn't that bad. We're, you know, it's not really dragging or anything. It looks like it was down for just a little bit, uh, maybe roll change or something like that. But this is where the remote monitoring and the customization of alerts come into play. So if you were monitoring these and you saw that this index motor was up around 70, 80, maybe even 90% RMS torque, you can create uh, an alert for that to be sent out very similar, like I was talking about index speed or your tonnage um, and your form station or anything like that. This just gives a little more explanation. But again, you can create a completely customizable alert around that data point for the index servo motor. So we'll say if that torque gets to be 80 to 90%, it will automatically set out an, an alert if it's set up. It sends out an alert again to whoever, whether it be the maintenance department, production manager, process engineer. Um, it can be sent out to anybody. And again, it goes into that, that annoyance more than anything is, hey, you know, you have a problem with this index motor it's up around 80% to 90%, you've got to get out here and see what's wrong. And again, it will send those alerts out every minute, every two minutes, every five minutes, every 10 minutes, every 15 minutes, or it'll send the alert out if it gets to a certain percentage. Um, it can automatically be set up to say, hey, this got to 90%, send that alert out. I don't care who it goes to, send it out to everyone. You'll get the alert. And again, kind of that uh, annoyance maintenance type of thing, but very effective. And we've got two oven zones. Um, this one's about 780 and this one's 764, it looks like. And again, the same concept can be set up for your oven zones. So if you have an oven zone that isn't getting temperature or isn't going up to temp, we can create an alert for that. If you've got an oven zone that's over temp, again, we can create an alert for that. So if you wanna monitor that zone, that 780 degree zone, say from 800 to 850, we can set up customizable alerts that will alert you when that zone is starting to get to that kind of that threshold of uh, greater than or less than or equal to type of application. And then, like I said, I just had a couple other motors in here just to show a quick explanation. And now we've got the BMG ADR mobile application. Of course, downloadable for free on any smartphone or any Apple or Android device, just go to Google Play or the Apple Store. You can download it for free. It pretty much looks exactly like this logo here. I think it may have a, a couple little windows over here that you can click on just to get a preview of it. Now, I just wanted to show a couple quick slides on what you're gonna see on the, your, the mobile portal. 
if you notice to my first window over here to the left, this is the the remote monitoring aspect of it. As you can see, we've got two machines. We've got our, our simulator here on the floor, and then we had a trim press that we were just trying it out on. Um, you know, you'll notice that the trim press is gray. The, the simulator is green. The green is running. The gray is down or has not been running. Now you can enter as many as many machines as you want on your screen here. So if you have eight machines with ADR, it will display all eight pieces of equipment on there. And you can remotely monitor it. And if you see that the, the green bar here goes from green and red, you'll automatically know that machine's down. And you can call up and say, hey, what's the machine down for? You know, And they'll tell you, oh, it's only been down for 15 or 20 minutes. Well, that's not the case. Because if you look over here, this will automatically show you how long it's been up since the last time it was down. So it kind of stops a lot of that. Well, we're getting it running, getting it running. It was only down for a few minutes. Um, no, you can monitor exactly how long it was down for. And then our second screen over here is OEE. It'll give you your OEE availability, quality, and performance. And it also breaks down a little bit farther into your speed. It'll give you your machine speed or cycle speed. And then down here on the bottom, since we didn't have any, it will give you a list of downtime events that have been logged in for that type of mach that machine specifically. So if we had a downtime event on our e-simulator over here, it would list it underneath here, downtime event for so-and-so, uh, drive repair or sheet replacement or something along those lines. And it will give you your journal entries also. So you can see down here exactly what happened and why it happened and how long it's been happening for. And then over here to the right, I just wanted to blow the screen up a little bit to give a better view of everything. And this is kind of a, another very similar view that, <clears throat> excuse me, that you'll see in the mobile customer portal is it's just the, the OEE screen. This is your basic introduction screen. And of course you can see we've got our speed, the material, the up time since last stop. And then we've got our overall OEE availability, performance, and of course quality. Moving on, and of course, many of us know anytime we develop a new technology, there's always going to be some objections. I objected, um, you know, for years to to get a new phone or to take that step into that technology based type of system. Um, you know, I got a new phone from work and as soon as I turned it on, they wanted me to hook to the cloud. <laughs> I wasn't comfortable with it, but that's the requirements anymore. And, you know, if Apple's if Apple's secure enough to download our information to the cloud, I believe that any type of cloud system is safe and secure to store any type of information. So the biggest objective or objections that I hear a lot about is this won't work at our company, we're different. And that may be true. You may have something Im implemented already to, to catch OEE on some of these machines. You may have come up with something on your own, you know, that's, that's entirely possible. But the thing that companies need to, to keep in mind is employee demograph is, is ever changing. We're constantly gaining and losing people. Many of you have lost some of these highly experienced people, whether that be 30, 40, 50, 60 years of experience. And they're retiring and they're, they're getting harder and harder to replace because the industry is advancing so fast that people are unable to learn. So what we're doing as Brown Machine Group as we're stepping in as an OEM through the ADR service to, to fill those shoes, so to speak. We're offering our experience, we're offering our knowledge, we're offering our technology, and we're offering all our, all our abilities that we've gained over the past 60 years to help you let go of them guys that have been there for 40, 50, 60 years. And, and I hate to say it, but replace them with technology that will fill them that void all of them lost employees. Another plug for PMMI Unpacked, and this is not a, an insult to anybody, it's just a statistic is by the year 2025, 75% of the workforce will be millennials. And that's not a bad thing, but that's just showing us that we are slowly progressing to an, an basically an augmented reality AI type of op application for these machines, because those guys that know the machine, they, they can hear the valve misfiring, they can hear the, the vacuum not right, you know, we're losing a lot of them gentlemen. So that's where this technology will come in is, as it steps up 
It monitors everything. It allow you to report everything. It allow you to record everything. And if you guys have any problems, of course, you can come back to us and we're more than willing to help. Anytime you develop a new solution, money's always going to be a concern. It costs too much. It's too expensive. You know, we can't implement this into our machines. But the, the funny thing is, is if you were to go farther and compare the cost of, the, of an unplanned downtime event, which I talked a little bit about, versus the cost of the solution, the solution pales in comparison to a cost of an unplanned downtime event. In the automotive industry, an unplanned downtime event could cost up to $3 million an hour. In a 10 hour day, that's $30 million. That's a huge, huge amount of money to be lost on something that this technology and this type of this ADR service will help reduce because it is monitoring everything. And like I said, it is working towards that preventative, predictive preventative type of maintenance. On another note, the average unplanned downtime event is costing the industrial manufacturing industry over $50 billion a year. Again, that's a huge, huge amount of money. You know, with this system, if we could stop a third of that, that would be, you know, you're talking $15 billion that could be regenerated back into the industry. So with this system, we're trying to help our customers, our employees and their customers, and of course their employees, to bridge that gap into automation technology. And of course, cybersecurity is important. IT won't approve this. Many of you know there's a constant tug of war between IT and OT. I personally don't think it's gonna end. I think no matter what we do, it's gonna be a struggle. It's gonna be that IT wants this, OT wants that. You know, and, and there I don't believe there's really a whole lot that we're gonna be able to do to bridge that gap. But the thing that a lot of people need to keep in mind is the ADR system was designed by OT specialists and IT specialists. So the system is safe and it is manageable through those keys, through your firewall. And of course, EI3 offers world-class security in the IIoT. So, you know, companies have to take that risk to risk to receive the reward. Many of us know we like to kind of hold back and, and see what things are going to do. But if you take that risk, you take that step, we here at Brown Machine Group are going to be behind you when you do make that step. And we're, we're here to support you and to promote that risk and that reward. All right, and a quick summary. BMG ADR helps eliminate in-person plant contact. Many of you know it sometimes it's hard for us to get into a customer's plant. We're in Michigan, we have the quarantine. Um, and we, we've got some guys that go out there and sit for two, you know, 10 days to do a, a one day service call. That's extremely expensive and extremely economical, um, not very economical. So with the ADR system, it helps eliminate any type of geographical limitations for servicing equipment. We can go anywhere around the world. We don't have to send anybody. We just jump online. We make any type of changes and it, it's automatic. And of course, you know, it keeps us safer, faster, safer, and more event environmentally responsible because we can support you from the factory floor, whether it be through the Euphoria Chalk, whether it be from a remote service session. We are providing that remote service and that connectivity and that the ability to repair machines without kind of having the service guy there, he can be on the Euphoria Chalk session. And of course, it helps reduce unplanned downtime events. If you can monitor those, those issues, you can receive the, the alerts for the issues, then you can go out there and kind of basically preventive predictive maintenance yourself because of receiving all those type of alerts from the data points. And of course, it helps increase OEE. Everybody knows if you reduce downtime events, you reduce, you increase your OEE, increase your OEE, you are happy, your customers are happy, your employees are happy, your OEM is happy, and everybody just benefits from a higher OEE increase. And then, of course, BMG's advanced digital readiness will benefit the company and its employees by helping them take that next step into the IIoT. We all are progressing to it. AI is changing the automation industry every day. There, you know, so no matter what we do, we here at Brown Machine Group, 
want to stay ahead of the times. We want to stay up with our machines and we want to help everybody make that transition into possibly a completely automated type of industry. All right. Well, I don't think we have many questions. I just want to thank everybody for, for jumping in. Um, you know, if you, again, if you have any questions for myself or for anybody else, you can email us at BMG ADR Brown machine group.com sales at Brown machine group.com. Or if you want to reach out to me even farther, it's K martini at Brown machine group.com. Thank you.